The following broadcast is brought to you by Accelerate Church. Accelerate Church is located in Amarillo, Texas at 4400 South Crockett Street. If you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. Our service times are Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. If you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or for yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806-418-8913. We also invite you to download our app. Our Accelerate Church app is available on your Apple or Android device. You can listen to previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, as well as watch live streaming at the touch of a button. For more information about our ministry, log on to AccelerateChurch.cc. Welcome to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fowle. I'm the pastor at Accelerate Church, and we want you. We have services every Wednesday, 7 p.m., and Sundays at 10 a.m. If you can't be with us in person in Amarillo, Texas, then what you can do is go to AccelerateChurch.cc, and you can stream live the service right there off our website. I'm excited to be coming to you from our studios here at Accelerate Church, and I have my pastor with me this week, which is always one of the highlights of my life to have my pastor with me. How are you, Dr. Mark T. Barkley? I'm alive and well, and I'm very glad about it. I am very excited about this week's broadcast. And really, what happened was I was at your conference at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And it was in California, so it was towards the beginning of the year. And uh, you started talking about things I never heard you mention before. And I've been with you now for nine years, if you can believe that's already ticked by Doesn't pretty seem quick. That's right, but it it's goes something by else. fast. It's really something. I'm thankful that you're my pastor, and what I'm thankful for is the gift of God on your life that you see prophetically the time that we're living in, and a lot of people I've noticed don't know what time it is on God's calendar, and people are already disorganized as is. They just kind of operate and wing it all the time, it seems like, But, but with God, it's important that you know what time it is, and I think of the sons of Issachar in the Bible. They knew what time it was, so they knew what Israel should do. And one thing I know about you is you know that we're in the last minutes of the last days. In fact, this year, at the very first week of the year, you had a webinar that you do every year. But this year, you titled it The End of the World. Yes. At the beginning of the year, I realized there's like a different level of urgency uh, of your ministry when I'm sitting under you. There's like a different level of urgency. Talk to us a little bit about this. Your webinar is called The End of the World. What's this all about? Well, I think uh, for many years now, uh, actually, I've been preaching since the 1970s, and myself and other preaching, we'll say colleagues, we have been preaching about this day to prepare yourself, the Lord's coming, the King is coming, the latter times, the end times, the last days, and the elements of that, uh, uh, of course, from the scriptures. But now we're looking around and we're saying, oh, it's not coming, it's here. Yeah. All these things we have read, quoted, preached from the scriptures are now manifesting all around us every day of our very lives. And so my idea is not to frighten anybody, of course, or, but it is a slap, I think, maybe, uh, you know, one of those both sides of your face to say, (laughs) come on, body of Christ, come on, preachers, let's wake up those that need to. Let's wake up and pay attention to the day we live in because it is so crucial to the climax of the ages. Yeah. Yeah. It's here. It's here. It's upon us. You know, since I was born in 78, it's a long time you've been preaching since you've been, you've been preaching since I was before I was born, really. And uh, I've, I've grown up in church. My dad, of course, a pastor in Wheeler, Texas. And he's taught me about end times. I've known we're at the end from the time I was, can remember. I've known we're at the end, but I mean, this is it. I see things going on, Pastor, in this culture, and I just, you know, there's not really words even put to it to to describe, wow, this is it. Like, this is it. This is what yeah. we've been looking yeah. at. This is what I've heard about. It's what I've known about. And it's it seems to be coming in a different way than I thought it would come for some reason. Yeah. There's not a lot of hype. It's like it's been this slow, progressive. Uh, yes, and it's purposed. Yeah. Yeah. It, it didn't accidentally happen. It's purposed by the evil one. It's purposed by people who want what the evil one's good to offer. 
and the, and we live in the day of the Christ, but we also live in the day of the Antichrist. Mm. And the spirits, I call them the forerunners to the Antichrist himself. They're prepping even the body of Christ, if they can, the places they can, for the arrival of the Antichrist, which means, you know, anti-Christian. And so that's what we're dealing with. I was thinking the other day, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And it was out of Timothy where it talks about these perilous times. Of course, it's the Apostle Paul, which really is the Holy Spirit anointing him to tell Pastor Timothy and preserve for us to get a grip on it. Yeah. And in that, it says perilous times would come. And then there's no mention of wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, mm. global warming, or anything else that would be related to the earth. Now, Jesus did. We don't deny that, of course. But the Holy Spirit is telling a young pastor, Timothy, prepare yourself for misbehavior and deterioration of the very moral traditions of the human race. Yeah. Liars, cheaters, lovers of self more than of God, etc. Yeah, and the whole, that's what he said. Know this, yes. as Second Timothy 3, for those of you wondering, yes. in the last days perilous times will come. Something you said a few years ago in one of your meetings I was in, that's written to the Christian. Yeah. You know, a lot of yes. times you hear that, you think, uh, sometimes our minds think, well, out in the world it's getting so tough. Well, it is tough. The way the transgressor's always been hard, though. Always been hard. <laughs> so th always that's nothing hard. new. Yeah, right. But this was written to a pastor. Yeah. And he's talking about it in time, so here we are. And, you know, I, it's amazing at the same time, Pastor, that I know, just like I know my name, I know we're here at the end. There are other colleagues of mine, pastors, preachers, that I've heard say things like, well, he's, he's not coming anytime soon. And that lines up with a, a mocker more than a preacher. And I just think it's dangerous, if you're listening to us, to live like Jesus couldn't come back today. There's nothing prophetically that has to happen for Jesus nothing. to come back. Isn't that true? No, from this moment right now, this very moment, until the Lord appears to the church, nothing that was prophesied that needs to be fulfilled is left to be done. It's all done. Now, sure, there's things between right now and the actual end of the age and right. the end of Armageddon and, and, and when the Lord puts his foot on the Mount of Olives. Sure. Yeah. But between right now and the book of Thessalonians, we're going to meet him in the air. That's not a touchdown. Right. That's there's a the difference air. between meeting him in the air and him putting his foot on the Mount of Olives. Yeah. And that, by the way, for those listening that say, well, I've been listening to YouTube preacher and, and he says there's no such thing as a rapture of the church, et cetera. You need to know something. It was a mystery hidden in Christ and Paul revealed it in first Corinthians. He talks about it. Yeah. Let me show you a mystery. Yeah. We shall not all die. And first Thessalonians, the first chronological book he wrote in the years that you see when, when they came out, the very first thing on his mind in first Thessalonians, all about the coming of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And he said that, don't be ignorant, brethren. I don't want you ignorant about what happens when someone dies in Christ. Here's one of my deals. Why would anybody, any Christian, especially a teacher, preacher, pastor, wh why spend the effort to do away with something where all hope and happens? <laughs> why spend the effort to tell everybody... Like I just heard a preacher say, I am called to preach the gospel. And for almost 60 minutes, he told his audience not to read any of the red letters. Yeah, I, I text him. I said, that is the gospel. That is. Let's make up our mind. <laughs> so why would we work so hard, I wonder, to be in the kingdom, a voice in the kingdom, and use our voice to tell everybody, let's strip away everything you've always believed, the things that we believe the Bible says. And so no rapture, don't trust the Bible, it's not for today, don't go to church, you don't need that, it's a man-made idea. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, sure. I thought it was Jesus that said, I'm building my church. Oh, you, oh, see, maybe <laughs> that's that. that's red letters. <laughs> that's red, that's letters, red letters. I was going to say, maybe that's the difference. You said something, and I mentioned the California meeting at the beginning of this year, 2022. And you, you made this statement so simple. I wish people would get it. I don't want to repeat this, and I kind of want to try to catch the, the flow you were in there in California because it was such a urgent flow, and, and you were saying lock and load, and you said the Holy Spirit mentioned that church attendance is the most effective maneuver that a person can do to make it against Satan and the Antichrist. Yeah, I believe that with all my heart. I believe the Scriptures tell us that. Yeah. You know, 
all the way back to the Old Testament, though uh, there's a lot of New Testament uh, verses that tell us to chase God, seek God, be in the presence of God, when, you know, gather together, do not forsake the assembling, uh, and more so, not less, but more so as you see the day approaching. I believe with all my heart, I'm watching this, many people, including full churches, I believe, and many pastors, they don't have this urgency that we're really in the end of all times and the Lord is on his way. Because if they did, we wouldn't have this nonchalant, take it easy, what's the big deal, Brother Barclay, it's just church. Right. Uh, we wouldn't have that. We'd be saying, oh, my God, yes, I'm chasing God. I love you, Jesus. I'm submitted. You know, I'm studying my Bible. I'm looking up. That's yeah. what the Bible says to do, look up. Yeah, nothing would yeah. keep you from doing that. That's correct. If you really believed. That's correct. Quickly, I'll mention this to you. When I was a young man, and my job was to mow the grass, not only at our house, but at the church. And my dad was the pastor, and he told me, Dr. Barkley, he said, Jeremy, you need to mow the grass this morning. He went off to the office. I said, yes, sir. I know to say the right words. Yes, sir. It reminds me of a lot of Christians, right? Yeah. But I, I, this particular game was a football game called Super Tecmo Bowl. And if you win the Super Bowl three years in a row, which takes a lot of time because you have to play every game of the season, 16 games, and the playoffs, win the Super Bowl. If you do it three times, it unlocks the Hall of Fame players. That's what I was trying to do. And I'll never forget as long as I live. I got caught up. Time got away from me. I didn't realize it. I was close to Dad returning. I didn't know it. But this house where we lived in Wheeler, Texas, little bitty town, the way it was when my dad pulled in the driveway for lunch the sun would reflect off of his front windshield, and I could see it on that living room wall. I can see it like it was yesterday because terror filled my heart right, right, as right. I'm sitting here playing playing my football game, right. and I see that reflection, and I wasn't looking for the return of my dad. When dad says do it, be about his business. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mind if I play mm -hmm. after I do what I'm told right, to do. That's right. But that, that little scenario, I, I look around, Dr. Barkley, and I can't help but think about the way the church is. People that aren't looking for the master to return, they end up playing games. Time's getting away. You don't realize what's happening. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. I, I just did a, a live uh, telecast for one of our major uh, Christian stations uh, just a few days ago. They asked me this question. Why do you think most pastors, which I, if I understood their report, wasn't mine, their study showed only 26% of all pastors in America believe in a worldview. And so why is that, Dr. Barkley? And I said, well, it's, it is impossible not to have a worldview if you live in your Bible. Wow. Because wow. Jesus, Jesus is a worldview. Yeah. But yeah, and so uh, go into all the world. I mean, we can go on forever and spend all our time away on this broadcast trying to prove the point. It's that clear to prove. Yeah. But the reason that we're facing some of the lethargy, the spiritual laziness, people do not, they're not in this book. I'll say it this way. The less you're in the Bible, the more you become your God. Ooh. Your ideas, your theologies, your take on it. If you're in the Bible, you always say, yeah, but the word said. Yeah. And that's the major difference. That's the difference right there. Wow, time is already gone. I don't even know where time went today, but... We're out of time. You're listening to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. I'm Jeremy Fowle, the pastor, and I have my pastor in the studio, Dr. Mark T. Barclay. Thanks for coming down. Love it. All right, let's do it. You Be blessed. It. Tune in tomorrow on the Accelerate Church broadcast. You've been listening to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. And if you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or for yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806-418-8913. We also invite you to download our app. Our Accelerate Church app is available on your Apple or Android device. If you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street in Amarillo, Texas. And our service times are Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We look forward to meeting you very soon.